Hi guys, today in this episode, I wanna share with you my nightmare. Or you know what, this is not a nightmare, this is a... Insomnia dilemma it is. <laughs> you know when your brain is just rotating around some object or some subject, and every time when you came up with a decision, you do of course the analytics of the decision and then you say no this is not a good uh, decision so then the whole process is starting again so this is what's happening with me in these last two and a half or three weeks every night i'm just reading stupid user manuals and white papers and uh, protocols and feature lists and uh, really this is a nightmare but what the reason for this uh, if you follow my channel and if you are not now you get from me three seconds to subscribe to my channel. Because if not, I will sing, eh? And I don't think so you wanna hear me singing. So three, two, one. <laughs> you know already, we had here some kind of tragic event in a studio. We will organize the funeral around the middle of December. Or I will send this puppy to some kind of voodoo magic and wizard guy who we bring back to the life or bring back like a zombie <laughs> probably so as he died um he left me here alone with my studio without any kind of mixing solution so one day i waked up and i said okay this is the best time to uh, upgrade my studio with some kind of newer fresher uh, mixing technology but on the same way I want to expand the number of the mixed processed channels in my studio. Because some idiot, he's always buying new gears, I don't know who. It's me. <laughs> but do all of this with much more simpler setup. It's maybe it sounds impossible, but I never afraid from the impossible missions. Eh? <laughs> but top of it, because I'm a kind of Hungarian mixer guy, <laughs> I want to do all of these changes from the limited amount of money. <laughs> so this is how we started. This uh, insomnia dilemma <laughs> This puppy, this old uh, Tascam DM4800 uh, digital mixer, <laughs> he can handle almost 90 something input from this 90 something input he can mix down 64 channel but on 96 kilohertz on 24 bit depth plus this puppy can send 32 96 kilohertz 24 bit digital audio signal right into the DAW software and on the same way he can play back 32 channel on 96k 24b plus you get from this old puppy 24 uh, mixing bus 16 aux send and 16 aux return but you can configure to stereo send and stereo return imbalanced he has a lot of digital and really weird digital uh, connectors and you also can cascade two from this beast to double all the possibilities and all the processed channels. And this is why I think the Tascam DM4800 digital mixer, even if he's old, like, yeah, it came out in 2005, if I remember good. So it's about almost 15 year old technology, but he's still a king. And on the moment when he died, <laughs> I know already, this will be a really hard task to find something even just similar like this animal. So I spend a lot of time on a pro audio market to find some uh, solution. And what I realized, the level of the stupidity of the pro audio industry is just in a sky. You don't believe? Let me explain to you. You can find uh, this uh, old digital mixer on eBay for for two thousand dollar or two thousand euro, with with fully, fully, fully expanded. But nowadays on a market, you can go up even to ten thousand euro. Mm? It's a lot of money, and you will not find nothing. 
just let me show you a few examples. Um, I opened here uh, two websites. One is the Toman and the other is the Sweetwater. So let me show you what's going on on our Sweetwater. I selected here a minimum 48 channel of mixed processed channel up to 128 uh, channel. <laughs> okay, may you think now, well, you are crazy, why you need 120 something channel or 90 channel? to mix it, why I'm not mixing in a DLW software. Um, uh, the answer is very simple. I have many synthesizers and uh, outboard effect gears and uh, mastering units, whatever, and I'm still, I'm just a small home recording studio. Mm. <laughs> okay, I'm a big home recording studio. So why I need this amount of channels? For the explanation, let me show you some really stupid Excel uh, table, or what is this? So here in this section, uh, you can see how much uh, channel is coming from the devices to the DAW software or to the mixer. In this column, you can see the maximum amount of channels and all together, if I'm adding everything together now at the moment, without the additional uh, puppies and uh, weirdos in my electronic lab, I have 90 channel to mix down or to process or to record. And I have to feed 34 channel from the mixer to send out to other gears or sequencers or samplers or whatever. The case here, I have many uh, gears with uh, parallel multiple outputs. For example, the Roland GX10 has four individual output, or the Asus Vinus has six, and the Novation Supernova has eight. Okay. Most of the case, I can run with the stereo output, most of the case, but there is many case when I really like to use this individual outputs. Here is one example. On the Novation Supernova, you can choose between two mode. So if you go on a multi trimbal mode, then you can use the eight individual output because you know, you need a different kind of EQing and dynamic processing on a drum sections, on a bass synthesizer, or, in a or on a lead synthesizer, or in a carpets or whatever. Another really good example is the Emu Hollywood Gold Sampler synthesizer. It has 16 individual output, so you can imagine what you can do with 16 uh, uh, parallel output inside in your mixer, huh? <laughs> Roland 5080, again, 8 individual outputs, and Yamaha CXXR, again a sampler, uh, 4 individual output. Here I have other kind of really interesting animal, which is the Lexicon MX400 effect unit. This is a really nice small 1U height rack unit, but it has inside 4 individual effect engine. It's depend on the configuration. Of course, you can launch up like uh, double mono, single stereo, or, or double stereo, or uh, you can apply four parallel processing on a four output, and then you can mix down to two stereo output. So, other example, uh, Roland MC909, of course, you can use the, the stereo input to do a sampling, and then you can use this sampled uh, other sound from other synthesizer to build up your beat inside in a MC909. So now you can understand why the inputs of my synthesizers and samplers and uh, uh, outboard effect gears is really important part in the future upgrade uh, around my studio. And in the past I connect all of this, okay, through my old Tascam DM4800 mixer. Here in this section you can see what is the absolute minimum of minimum of minimum uh, around the setup, which is meaning I'm not using the, the individual outputs and uh, I'm not using all the inputs on my gears. So it's like a absolutely basic hobby setup. Even in this case we are talking about 48 processor channel with 29 send out and uh, patching back or mixing down 
together with the inputs. Here in the next section, this is the digital interfacing section because most of the time I'm using the, for example, here the Art Voice channel, I really like to use the analog to digital converter of the Art Voice channel. It sounds fantastic. It has a 130 something dB dynamic range and it just sounds fantastic. Then then just send the pure digital signal into the mixer or to my DLW software. In Emu Hollywood Gold I use the ASCBU input to, to synchronize the inside clock of the synthesizer to my digital mixer and then I get a really nice and really clean and clear uh, audio signals. Jama High Specs, no, no question, it's, it's an absolutely high-end uh, top-notch uh, studio reverb um, engine. So, so you need to feed <laughs> him really well. So 96K, 24-bit uh, stereo processor channel and if you are using the ASCBU input and the ASCBU output on this uh, really absolutely beast professional unit, then of course you don't get additional uh, latency on a conversion. So the digital signal is just bang, it's just going into this DSP and then uh, you just get the absolute minimum of minimum latency from this unit and uh, actually you can hear the differences if you are playing uh, piano uh, or violin or or uh, some kind of uh, uh, orchestral setup it's actually it's just just sounds beautiful the on a, on a mastering section and in a in a monitoring section again I really like to use the digital to analog converter of the DBX Quantum 2 mastering unit, even if I'm not applying any kind of mastering on a signal. But uh, this is a this is a top-notch uh, converter with 0.004% of total harmonic distortion, and uh, it's just it's just a beast. You can hear every kind of piece of small. Uh, problems and noises in your mix from your DAW software. So this is again uh, why I'm using the, the ASCBU input on this unit. And uh, uh, on this way I can use the analog output of the Quantum 2 for uh, drive my monitor speakers, but on the same time I can use the ASCBU output to feed back the master and audio to the DAW software and record back absolutely without any kind of noise or losing any kind of quality back to the DAW software as a stereo mix down channel. Yes, I know uh, many things I can do nowadays inside in a computer, but then where is the fun? <laughs> but I think I will change this a bit because uh, my new plan around the mixing and around the uh, interfacing to the DAW software is changed a lot in this last uh, two weeks in my stupid head. So let me explain to you what I want to do. <laughs> you know what? Actually I can show you. Oh my god. This one here <clears throat> is just the AUX send and return cable from my mixer to the outboard gears. So this is only the aux send and return, okay? So compare this, almost 31 kilogram of cable, really nice uh, snake cable from Cordial, of course. Compare this to this. This new technology, this networking audio technology, it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, maybe in my dreams. <laughs> Let me explain to you what's going on. The stupidity of the pro audio industry, it's unbelievable. May you think, networking audio is, is this, this, this cable, and then, then you are done. <laughs> In our old world, we had, of course, analog cables and analog connectors. There is not so much standard around analog signals. So what is mean? You have a microphone level of signal, you have a line level of signal, and from the line level of signal you have two kinds, the unbalanced 
and the balance. And actually, that's it. In, in our past, <laughs> the audio networking protocol holds three main components. The cable, the signal itself inside in a cable, and the connector. And if you want to change one part of this protocol, you did it really simple. So here is a really nice example. This end is jack and this end is XLR. But nothing can stop you to cut down this XLR connector and install another jack connector on the end or other RCA connector or whatever. So basically, in an analog world, this is our standard. And this standard is solved everything for almost 100 years. So compare this to this one. And for the comparison, let me show you <laughs> the list of stupidity around Pro Audio Networking Audio Industry. Huh? I find a really nice article on the Wikipedia, uh, which is the comparison of audio network protocols. And <laughs> uh, look, look at this. AS47, AS50, AF67, Audio Rail, AVB, uh, Avion Pro, Cobra Net Dante, Etherson, Etherson, Other Etherson, HyperMac, Livewire, Emlan, Optocore, QLAN, Remena, Riedel, SoundGrid, Symmetric, Simlink, Human. <sighs> Just I know other six or seven additional protocol which is not listed here. Now you can understand the source of my nightmare. If you take a look on this list, you can realize immediately something really stupid. There is no tool protocol <laughs> which can speak with each other. So you cannot connect a Dante interface to AVB audio network or Versa or Vitsa or you understand. So in the past, when we had this one, okay, or the simple digital audio uh, connections like ASCBU or SPDF or optical connection, whatever, we had absolutely strict and absolutely limited, really nice protocols. Even we did in the past kind of tricks like how to connect the normal SPDF uh, digital audio source to ASCBU port or Versa. So in the past, Everything was clean and everything was clear how you can do a really complex and huge and big but professional setups. So what those companies and those brands they did with these protocols? <laughs> they use this to protect their own environment or their own brand. Let me explain to you. For example, Roland. The Roland did a really nice, beautiful mixer, which is the M5000. A beast. A beautiful beast of a mixer. It's actually, if you ask me, it's not cost so much, so it's like 17,000 euro or 23,000 euro, something like this, but it can mix down a 128 channel, okay, right inside in a mix, and you have a lot of flexibility to how to process and how to patch and how to send. Uh, the signals from one end to the other point. So in this example, if you want to expand this really beautiful, absolutely amazing digital mixer, of course you have to buy a Roland stage boxes, Roland interfaces and Roland I.O. boxes and I.O. ports. So <clears throat> let me show you. They are using mainly the REAC protocol. Of course you can use other kind of protocols, Dante, MADI, uh, Waves, Sound Grid, but with a lot of limitation. Don't forget, all of these stage boxes and additional I.O. ports, they have inside uh, the preamp what you have to control from remotely from the mixer. And in this case, of course, if you connect uh, some kind of uh, third-party Dante audio interface, in your stage, but you want to mix uh, everything in the Roland M5000. And if you want to apply some kind of changes around the gains of, of the, the converters, you cannot do it. And almost every year, 
Somebody came out with some kind of new idea. And... Uh, <laughs> I really, I, I don't understand. This is the sad reality. If you go to the Roland, you have to use the Riak. If you go to the Presonus, you have to use this. If you're going to the Moto, you have to use AVB. If you're going to the uh, who Ellen and his, you have to use the SQ link or S link or what's the name? S link. I yeah SQ SQ S link. It's you see, it's even not listed here. So <clears throat> the Roland is supporting the React, the Dante, a Muddy, and the Soundgrid. But let's check, for example, the Presonus. It's running on AVB, but not the same AVB what the Moto is using AVB. This is a different kind of AVB. Network ready with a choice of computer recording methods. Who, who said that? <laughs> Because I know a Moto is using the AVB, but this AVB is not the same AVB like what the Moto is using. Moto already modified the AVB protocol to get uh, uh, smaller latency. Uh, okay, so they went on from uh, 2 millisec to 0 0.6 millisec, something like this. This is what's happened. AVB Ethernet connection. This what they're saying here is not true because you cannot connect your computer directly to the AVB network with your built-in network interface and get audio data to your DAW software. This is not true. For this you need to buy a really special AVB network audio network card for 900 euro, something like this. Or you can buy some... Uh, Intel uh, server adapter and you have to modify the BIOS and uh, the bootloader, I don't know. So this is even is not true what they're saying here. Okay, let's check the next one, which is the Allen and Heath SQ series mixer. Actually, it's a really nice mixer. I really like it. It has a massive uh, <laughs> processing power inside with FPGAs, with DSPs, whatever on 96K. So the, the SQ family from the Allen and Heat, for example, they just supporting the Dante. They own the SQ link, which is kind of gigaways, something, something. And again, the sound grid from the waves. Let's check the other one. Hmm, for example, uh, Soundcraft. So let's see what kind of networking protocols they're supporting. Avium, Anet, 16. Cobranet and Dante, Blue Link, Pff, that's it. <laughs> no waves, no uh, AVB, nothing. <laughs> I, I really, I, I don't understand. The VR series is a kind of the same like a Roland M5000, huge mixer with huge channel amount, but you have to pay a price of it's a quite like you buying a tree house in Hungary, uh, including the cow and the dog and the cat, <laughs> and some nice lady. <laughs> so the VR series has a digital mixer. Uh, let's see what kind of networking options they have. So Anet, Blue Link, Dante. Cobranet, Ether Sound. So <laughs> even the Soundcraft, <laughs> it's using a different protocol for their own products. So Ether Sound, Medicat 5, it, that's it. <laughs> so again, no AVB, no Sound Grid, and no other kind of protocols which just listed here in this huge table. And no React uh, from uh, from uh, from Roland. Why? You understand what's going on here? Ah, and the next level of stupidity of the pro audio industry. This old Tascam DM4800 digital mixer, as I said, can run on 96k, 24 bit, and he can mix down 64 channel plus money, aux cents and buses, whatever. Compare this to the solutions nowadays. Huh? The LNN Heat SQ series mixers, they're kind of nice, as I said. 
uh, they are still in my focus, so maybe I will use them for something something. So they are running on 96 kilohertz, but only 48 channel. Hmm, maybe in the last 15 years the DSP and FPGA technology didn't uh, evolve, or hmm, this is not true. In the last 10 years, the computing power of the DSP chips, they went up at least 40 times for the same price. This is true also on FPGAs. Even your phone has more uh, DSP and computing power <laughs> now in your pocket, like uh, what the Tascam built in into this mixer. And guess what? You cannot find this 48 direct input on the mixer. So you have to spend other money, okay, to buy expansion to this mixer because this mixer has only 32 input, mic input only, on the back side. And uh, uh, if I remember good, 16, uh, 16 uh, output, yeah, 16 output. So 32 mic input and 16 output. Let's compare this to the Tascam DM4800, eh? <laughs> 24 mic input in this line, yeah. 24 line input, yeah. 24 physical insert point, yeah. For each channel, of course. Six individual monitoring output. Eight stereo balanced aux send and return. Here you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Left, five, six, seven, eight, right. And here also. Plus stereo output for the main mix. Plus money, money, money other digital audio interface. ASCBU, SPDF, work clock, time code input for the time code display, MIDI IO, NS uh, serial controller, GPIO, food switch, ADAT interface. TDIF interface, but not one, three, which each one can uh, handle eight digital uh, I.O. Plus USB, plus here we have these four other expansion slots. Into these expansion slots, you can drop in 64 additional I.O. ports. It doesn't matter if it's digital or MADI or uh, Firewire interface, whatever. So this is the Tascam DM4800. So yeah, compare this. To, to the SQ7. You barely can find any kind of digital interface. Let's find one. Yeah, here is one. One ASCBU output. And that's it. <laughs> no SPDF, no optical, toslink, nothing. And you have this weird S-Link, SQ, Gigas, SQ, Link, S-Link connector, which is not speaking with nobody. <laughs> Only with uh, LN and Heat uh, interfaces. So, okay. Um, but at least this is running on 96K. Let me show you some other animals. Okay. Presonus. Um, Studio Live 32 mixer. Looks nice. Wow. It's really modern and really digital and really, 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 really. But... Uh, if you go to the technical specifications, you will face with a really sad reality. And this reality is here somewhere. Sampling rate, 48 kHz only. <laughs> they are now working on a 44.1 huh? in the future. So in the future they will develop lower <laughs> sampling rate. <laughs> oh my god. Let's go to the Midas, because the Midas guys, they, are, they are know what they are doing. I really like the big, huge, heavy consoles. They are absolutely like a beast. But of course, uh, the big uh, Midas consoles, they have a price like, oh my God. So, uh, for home recording studios, there is only one option, which is the M32, which is almost the same like a Behringer X32. Okay, for uh, Behringer X32, hmm, okay, if the Behringer is uh, running on 48K, it's okay, it's Behringer, maybe they will upgrade, I don't know, but from the Midas. <laughs> Please, God, help the pro audio industry to, <laughs> to change this stupidity. So, at the moment, they are saying the converters are running on 192 kHz, yeah, but the architecture inside, so all this DSP and really this uh, and this weird the FPGA processing, whatever, is just running on, on 48 kilohertz. 
So on the end, you get 48 kilohertz of sampling rate because it doesn't matter if your uh, digital to analog converter is running on really high speed, but the inside engine and uh, the recording to your computer is just 48K. Uh, so, and again, <laughs> what's going on with the inputs and with the outputs and with the processor channel? Hmm. 32 by 32 on USB. This is what you get to connect to your DLW software. This old puppy already did 15 years ago. 32 by 32, but on 96K. Huh? <laughs> Big difference. Live performance and studio recording digital console with up to. We know these up tos, yeah? We know this uh, marketing shalala up to. Up to 40 simultaneous input channels. Tascam DM 4800 up to 90 something channels. Yeah, from that uh, 64 processed yeah? <laughs> on 96K. Uh, <laughs> Okay, still Midas M32, a really nice mixer. Uh, later on, I think I will do uh, a video about uh, to help you guys to choose uh, mixers because no, I mean, really, in a picture, I know each of them. Uh, because not everybody has this really crazy and big uh, studio, what I have. So, M32, again, goodbye because it's running only on 48K. And what they're saying here, open architectures allow for future 96K operation. I, as a consumer or a customer, I have to ask when. Presono Studio Live. Again, 48K, goodbye. We will not deal with that. Uh, so we have now this SQ7, really big and heavy mixer, but uh, look the back again. So even if I'm expanding this system, this SQ7 digital mixer, I will still just get 48 processed channel, which is almost nothing. Of course, there is option to link two together and add the additional uh, uh, interface from the Pro line, which is the D Live. Okay, but don't ask uh, the prices because the the D-Live uh, expanders, for example, the DX168, it's running around uh, 4,000 euros, something like this. This is a network-based uh, solution. It's running on 96K, but what you will get with that, it's only 16 uh, additional input and uh, 8 output. And no ASCBU, no digital, no work clock synchronization, nothing. If you want to get these kind of features, you have to uh, buy the DM64 interface with, uh, with, with this crazy amount of shalala, okay? And then later on, of course, in, into these expansion slots here, you have to drop additional, 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 additional options to connect to the di digital uh, world with ASCBU or whatever. And then you will get a 128 channel, but not processed. It's just 128 connector to your 48 channel mixer. So what's going on with this SQ family? The SQ family and why I think about the SQ family as a um, extra additional mixer here in my studio, these new puppies from Darren and Heath, you can drop on them uh, additional uh, uh, processing DSP softwares like a plugin in your DAW software and with this you can get a really nice uh, analog modeled uh, compressors, EQs, channel strips, um, graphic EQs, whatever and even simulated preamps from uh, Neve or I don't know who, 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 based on who. This is what is really nice about the SQ family from the Allen and Heat and, and look, it it's looks amazing, I think. I did actually a calculation. I had to, uh, I have to spend about uh, 20 something thousand euro to expand the SQ7, but no. Mm, okay, le let me show you other kind of stupidity of the pro audio industry. Digital mixers. One of the most important uh, 
technical specific specification or features around them, of course, the sampling rate of the input and the outputs. Another read, which is the, the processing latency of the mixer. I give you <clears throat> um, homework to find the sample rate on a Soundcraft website around the digital mixers. Find it. F find it. Really. If you go down to the specifications, Four band uh, EQ, APC, 26, uh, fader, first, uh, task field, BSS, uh, mono stereo, buses, muddy, the, the, uh, uh, the second muddy. And 80 channel to mix on a 40 channel of DSP, you know. And that's it. But from this section here, you can figure out what's going on. Digital I.O. external work clock in range 48 kilohertz, plus minus 7 hertz. And this is Soundcraft, an absolutely professional, really old company. I spend a lot of time to <laughs> go through this list up to 10 or 11, even 17,000 euro. So what I faced, low sampling rate, low channel number, low, low number of the input connections, almost no digital interfacing at all, and you have to spend a lot of money to expand them with iOS, with option cards, with uh, plugins, or whatever. On the end, I figured out uh, the digital mixers nowadays, it's not an option for me. It's, uh, it's, just, it's just not. Uh, even, the, um, look, uh, we're talking about 10,000 euro, and it's just can, and it still can mix down 48 channel, which is, in my case, this is the absolute minimum of minimum for 10,000 euro. So this is where the pro audio industry is evolved in the last 15 years. So after this, I went to the other way, which is no real physical console in front of me. So some kind of uh, software or web-based or something, something based mixing solution with uh, networking audio and i find actually two option on a market almost every mixer or every interface on a market from the big names so roland jamaha ellen and heath and uh, uh, midas whatever they have an option to connect their gears into the Waves Sound Grid network. So what are the really big benefits of the Sound Grid audio network? First of all, you don't need to buy an expensive spatial network adapter for your computer if you want to deal with the Sound Grid network. You immediately will get the, the ASIO driver for the network itself. All the other um, protocols they need are really special networking interfaces to your computer and you have to pay a lot of money for them. And the reason for that, money from these uh, protocols are not free. So, you, so the brands and the, the, the manufacturers, they have to pay license fees or they have to buy a really special chips and the processors and FPGAs to connect their gear to the specific network. It is a very good example for this is the Dante. And uh, don't forget, uh, uh, the Waves guys, they are one of the most oldest uh, programmers around the digital audio processing. They developed a complete system around their own uh, plugins. So you can buy from them a server, a mixer for this, a software mixer, of course this is a software mixer, which can go up to 64 stereo processed channel, but with money, 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 I.O. and I.O. patching, uh, uh, of course, because this uh, patching solution is not uh, 
uh, built in into the mixer. It's running itself in the network uh, by this uh, sound grid uh, protocol. Then they developed also audio interfaces for this network. And they developed many other really special solutions, virtual uh, rack systems and uh, uh, option cards for different brands. Uh, so nowadays, only the sound grid, the only option where you can buy the full solution, like a full pack. This small puppy alone can uh, process on 96 kilohertz 176 SSL channel strip simulation on almost zero, zero, zero latency, absolutely zero latency. If you don't believe, you have to read the, the, the white papers. 124 piece of C4 compressor. It's impressive. And also they did the, the pricing on a really smart way. What I mean, you easily can uh, connect two, three, four, I don't know how many uh, SoundGrid server to the same SoundGrid network, okay? And then the whole processing power will add together. It's a, it's a really smart solution. So what you can do with this? You see this price, 2,400 something, and the other price is 700 something. So if you compare the computing capacity of them for 700, you will get 176. For 2,500, you will get 384. So if you buy two pieces from the impact server, you will get almost the same level of DSP power what you will get from, uh, from uh, 2,500 euro. But what uh, the really big benefit around the SoundGrid uh, network? Compatibility with other brands, as we saw already, even Roland supporting the SoundGrid network. Or let's go to the LNN Heat, as we saw SoundGrid Waves network. Hmm? Again, 64 input, 64 output on 96k. Really nice. So, and it's, it's the same true for um, Yamaha, for Midas, for Behringer, for, for many, many, many other brands. And here you can see, so this one, for example, is good for Behringer, okay, and Midas consoles. The next one, this Yamaha Mini Yagi Dagi card is good for many Yamaha mixer. These DSP servers, they are not doing nothing alone if you just buy the servers, they will not do nothing. But the Waves, uh, they have uh, a massive amount of really nice bundles. When you purchase these plugins from the Waves to run on the uh, SoundGrid server in your studio, of course, you are allowed to use the same VSTs in your DAW system. So in this uh, solution from the Waves, you easily can expand your studio with many, many extra features. And I really, I don't want to go deeply inside into this uh, pack uh, uh, solutions or bundles, what you will get, but a really nice uh, uh, list of uh, compressors, EQs and channel strips. If you're buying this mixer, okay, then you will get the the basic uh, channel uh, processors for free which will run on the SoundGrid network on absolute zero 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 latency because that's specifically developed for uh, the SoundGrid operation they have many many different options to connect to digital audio formats to other network formats even or to MADI format whatever just one example here the Apple Edge itself they also jumped on this train so they want to be a part of this uh, sound grid uh, system uh, this is the new uh, Symphony I.O. I heard this uh, converter, it's no contest, <laughs> really. <laughs> this Symphony I.O., <laughs> it's like, like a god. I'm telling you guys, it's like a god. 24 Apple Edge converter in your studio, 
24, not a stereo, 24. <laughs> Unbelievable. I, I really like this solution. And uh, so I did uh, many different uh, price lists. I added together all the number of IO ports, okay? And then uh, here on the bottom, the Excel is just calculated how much ports I left from the free ports. The first uh, setup. It actually is not cost so much because in 9,500 euro, I will get 128 mixed channel. Okay. Money option to, to route them and patch them and send one signal to there, to there, to there, to there. So altogether, this is one of the most cheapest solution to go against this really weird uh, and really stupid pro audio digital mixer market. Ah, I forgot to mention something. In each processor channel, huh, which is 64 stereo channel, you can drop eight plugin on each channel. And I forgot to mention something else. From the software mixer, Okay, when you have this really complex uh, channel setups with three plugin here, two compressor here, four EQ here, I don't know what kind of weird uh, one knob uh, uh, plugins there, 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 whatever. You can take all this setup as a preset and you can drop it into your DLW software to load up the same plugins <laughs> inside in your software in the same arrangement with, with all settings is already imported from the mixer. Then you can take your laptop with you, <laughs> with all of these uh, VSTs on it. You just open it and everything will be same like what you have in your studio. So now you can understand why the SoundGrid LV1 or Waves LV1 uh, digital mixer software is a really great option for me. This will wash together everything which is happening in a DAW and in a studio and around the mixer. So then this whole uh, complex setup will become only one uh, global solution. In the next example, I upgraded one IO interface, but with this upgrade, I got almost uh, almost double uh, possibilities because I get a lot of additional digital interface. So let me show you what's going on here. I get 32 analog micro line input, 16 analog output, 4 ASCBU input and 4 ASCBU output. Mm -hmm. I have 12 extra port on the inputs, six extra port on the uh, analog outputs, and a couple of few of uh, other digital extra ports. And the price difference between the two, it's about 1,500 euro, which is nothing. So let's go more harder, yeah? Here in this example, here I get uh, 72 inputs to the LV mixer and 36 outputs. We already arrived Okay, with the outputs, we already arrived to what we want in a max, max, max setup. But in this case, I get 28 uh, free ports. So what I can do with this 28, now you can see what I can do. In Hollywood Gold, I need 16. So I can drop here 16 to the Hollywood Gold. Okay, I still have 14. 14. Roll on 50, 80, let's give mm, 4 instead of 8. So now I get a lot of possibility to change the <laughs> amount of processor channels with a simple patch bay. I easily can connect to it almost any kind of mixer from the market, which is good enough, so it's running on 96k and uh, has enough inputs or outputs. In this setup, for example, what I did for the same money, just, just look, for the same money for 12,000 euro, I get this nice big beefy interface, yeah, so the stage grid 4,000, but I installed, instead of uh, using other sound grid uh, interface, 
I'm using Node LNN Heat SQ7 as a quasi audio interface plus uh, I can use in this case I can use the this really nice uh, FPGA based uh, plugins on the SQ7 right on the input of the, the, the channel but in this case what I can do with the SQ7 I can connect the MIDI USB port of the SQ7 to some really small stupid uh, computer and control the LV1 digital software mixer with the fader bank of the SQ7. This setup is like a minimalistic channel number, okay, but uh, using the SQ7 as a MIDI uh, controller and of course like a uh, audio interface, but in this case I can use the Apple Symphony uh, audio interface for drive all of my digital IOs because in this variation of this specific Apple H Symphony I get here 8 analog channel to do analog mastering or summing mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with really high quality Apple H converters plus all the digital inputs and outputs what I need to drive my uh, outboard gears and it's it's even cheaper than to buy this configuration, the f uh, three piece of uh, 2412 interface. So let's go to the next one, which is the top notch. Allen and Heat SQ7 mixer, Apple A Symphony, plus one additional IO box for the Sound Grid Studio. I get back these uh, extra free channels, what I can patch to everywhere where I want, plus this really mastering grade converters from the Apple Age. Uh, yeah, for a bit of money, which, which is around 15,000 euro. But if you compare this 15,000 euro, no contest on a market. So, <laughs> 128 mixed channel, plugins, a lot of plugins mastering grade converters and uh, a really nice uh, FPGA based a really nice huge big mixing console with 33 36 I don't know how many fader and don't forget I still can stream or record 64 channel to my computer or vice versa so if I'm starting from a really low let's say for 9000 euro okay later on year by year I can expand the system with mixer with mastering graded converters with monitoring solution whatever 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 so this is a really great option and don't forget I get a lot of uh, plugin so a lot of toy to drop into my uh, DAW softwares but wait a sec the biggest benefit of the SoundGrid network you can use the SoundGrid server in the same setup to run all of your Waves plugins inside in the server. You easily can mix uh, 100 or 200 uh, channel of really huge and massive uh, song, okay, on your smallest uh, Microsoft Surface 2 laptop. So all together, SoundGrid network, mm, fantastic solution, bit pricey, yeah, so <laughs> yeah, it's a bit pricey. So 10,000 euro is the bottom where, in my case where I can start. But uh, in your case, if you just need uh, 16 inputs and a really small server to deal with these 16 inputs, I'm telling you, we're talking about 4,000 euro, something like this, really low compared to the other uh, solutions. Now you get a picture what you can do with the SoundGrid network because I think. Uh, from these many other protocols and uh, solutions, the SoundGrid network is the only solution when you have this amount of flexibility. Let's jump to the next solution, which is kind of uh, uh, interface based but networking audio also with DSP, with mixer, which is not mixer, uh, whatever. What's going on here? The Motu has a really nice product family to do audio interfacing and kind of basic mixing f around the AVB network protocol. The AVB network is a kind of um, 
well-known main. So there is other brands and there is other mixes, whatever, who is, is supporting the AVB. But mainly the Moto is the biggest player behind the AVB at the moment. So they developed more a bit. So they shortened a lot on the latency. With this solution, yeah, I can build up the whole studio from 5,000 euro, including mixing and uh, send and returns and digital interfaces, everything. Maybe you can see here what's going on. So with this setup, I will get uh, 55, uh, 56 uh, analog inputs, which can run up to 192 kilohertz, okay? 36 uh, output, so use as a AUX send and uh, uh, return on a, on a 55. 24 ASEBU input and 24 ASEBU output. And other additional digital IOs like optical, SPDF, uh, word clock, uh, even MIDI. Top of it, they have money, 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 different kind of solutions, so different amount of uh, IO pores, different uh, digital inputs on it, and with mixer, not with mixer, with uh, headphone outputs, whatever. This is the big benefit of the Moto AVB system, because I can choose 24 channel here, 6th channel there, 8 channel there, digital there, stage box here, mic input only here, there, there, there. Uh, I can connect my workstation to one of the unit via Thunderbolt 2 interface, yeah? And then I can stream or record 128 channel on 96K or 64 channel on 192K. Ah, other benefit. Each of these interfaces has its own USB and Thunderbolt connections. In this way, I can connect to, to these interfaces additional, additional, additional computers as a sound source or recorder. So easily somebody can come up here with his own MacBook Pro, connect to the, the guitar interface via Thunderbolt or by USB, and he easily can record his own processed signal from his guitar place. With these Moto interfaces, as additional extra, you get also the, the full mixer solution. Each interface has its own 48 channel uh, fully featured mixer with aux sense returns, even built in uh, reverb uh, processor, EQ, gate, compressor, whatever, 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 and, and uh, money, money, mix buses. This is the mixer what you get uh, with it. It's a, actually, it's a really nice uh, software mixer, and it's web-based, so what is mean? Every kind of device what can run a web uh, browser, you can use as a mixer console. Uh -huh. In my vision, if I'm going with the solution from the Moto, uh, I have a plan to drop a, a big, huge uh, touch screen uh, on my desk and use this big touch screen as a mixer. And uh, I will drop a smaller uh, touch screen or maybe just an iPad or uh, uh, Microsoft Surface Studio or something to just to adjust the, the channel strips, connections or the patching and the, the routing. So this is in my vision because if, if the full system will cost only 5,000 euro, then I can spend other one or 2,000 euro to find a really nice uh, and uh, really uh, reactive uh, touch, uh, multi-touch uh, screen. So definitely check them out. All of this solution, what I just showed you in this video. I hope in the next week I will come out with the final decision then uh, I will order the selected uh, solution. So at the moment, I don't know what I will show. I really like the, the professionality and the flexibility of the sound grid, but I really like the price of this Moto AVB solution. <laughs> at the end, after two and a half weeks of uh, insomnia dilemma, it is, I know I'm just faced with the next dilemma. Motu or sound grid? Motu or sound grid? 5,000 euro or 10,000 euro? 
Hmm. See you next time. Bye.